Hello once again model kit builders. My name is Trevor Oslescu, owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Tips and Tech video where today I'm going to show you another one of our AMT Trophy Series engine builds. And today I'm going to step away from engines from General Motors like the Buick Nailhead and the Pontiac and we are going to be taking a look at an FE engine. Trevor! The FE engine was designed to replace the old Y-block engine from 1954 to 1957. Trevor! You can find the FE engine as an option in this kit, which I've done a review on, as well as this kit here, which I've also done a review on, and check those out up and above and at the end of this video. Trevor! Yes, Danny. What is it? <laughs> What's it of ye? It's a special motor that Ford and Edsel motor divisions combined together to make that had internal room inside so that you could put in bigger pistons and things like that as the engine progressed so that it would have a longer life than the old Ford Y-Block. Oh. I don't know what you just said. Danny. Oh, Danny. Look, it's very simple. This engine was a combined effort between Ford and Edsel to create a brand new motor that was able to grow with the companies. The engine is an FE because it's Ford Edsel, see, FE. And it came out in September of 1957 to go into the brand new 1958 Edsel, and it was 332 cubic inches. And Danny, do you wanna know something cool about this motor? Yeah. In 1958, there was a bored out version of this engine, and it was the 352. And that engine was used by Ford in 1958 as the police interceptor motor. Cool! Yeah, Danny, you know those 1958 B horror movies where you see the police arrive at the scene of the crime or whatever, and then they're driving like a 1958 Ford squad car? Yeah? Danny, that motor could be in that car. Awesome! Do you know what this means, Danny? No. What? Well, Danny, since all the Trophy Series cars have interchangeable engines, it means that we could take this Ford FE motor out of the 32 Ford and put it into a 1940 Ford Businessman's Coupe, make this as a sleeper moonshiner car with the police interceptor motor inside for maximum speed. Adam 17, Adam 17, you got a bogey in your nose. So, Danny, without further ado, let's go down to our bench and check out our amazing 1958 Ford FE motor. Now we're going to take a look at our Chilton's Auto Repair Manual from 1954 to 1963. This book was given to me by my good friend John. And one thing to keep in mind about the AMT Trophy Series model car kits is they all came out around 1960 to 1963 era, but they would have used the hot and current motors from the time period. So something like our Ford 332 FE engine, uh, it came out in 1958, so that would be a prime candidate for a hot rod motor of that era. Something from a newish late model car for them being put into an early vintage car. So let's open up this book and take a look at that FE engine and learn a little more on its history. Here we have an exploded image of our FE engine. Ford Edsel and this is going to be the 332. What is cool about this is in 1958-1959 it was the 332 or 331.8 cubic inch and then they also had the 352 so they would have bored out the cylinder heads here and maybe even added in a hot cam or something like that and that motor was 351.86 cubic inches and was used as a police interceptor package. Now, for the Edsel, they boarded out again and they made it into a 361 cubic inch, 
which they debuted in September of 1957. And it ended up in Ford and Meteor cars in Canada. And then later, in about 1961 to 1971, they bored out these again to 390.04 cubic inches. And this high performance version came with an aluminum intake manifold up here and had a four barrel carburetor intake. So that engine could also be in this kit as well, the 390. It all just depends on your imagination, what time period and what color the engine block is. And what's cool about the Edsel ones is that they were either painted yellow, a uh, yellow jacket kind of hornet color, or they were painted a green. And the green was actually a bigger motor, the 475 Edsel. And one thing I noticed about this engine versus the model kit is that the oil pan has the you know the bigger pan down here the capacity in the front and in our model kit the pan is in reverse to the back i don't know if you could actually do that on the real fe motor maybe some of you guys that had one let us know in the comments below uh, i think amt did that though to clear the metal axle in the front because otherwise you'd have to drill a hole through the side of the pan so that's just something interesting as we take a look at our instructions, which we'll do now. Here we have our instruction sheet for a 1932 Ford Victoria, which shows the Ford FE engine. And like I said, the oil pan is reversed with the biggest part of the pan facing at the back where the bell housing is here. We have our left and right hand side engine blocks. And if you notice, the cylinder heads and the valley cover are molded as one piece, which goes on the top. There is a little bit of a gap in between here that I found out. So we can shim the gap using some th very thin evergreen styrene, which I'll show you as we build this along. Then we get into the final build of our engine. There's our sub-assembly in the middle. Now, there are a choice between two exhaust manifolds. So this one is only showing the stock version of the FE manifold which is a big long log with a pipe sticking out the middle of it. And the front one had one in the front. And then we've got our valve covers gluing onto the cylinder heads. We have a sort of a Y type of uh, hose here, pardon me, which would go into the engine block and then split into our 34 Ford grill. I'm going to leave off the radiator hose here because I don't know what I'm going to put it into. Then we have our distributor going in the front. There's our intake manifold, which you could either paint as the engine color, factory, or as that aluminum version. Then we've got our four-barrel carburetor sitting on the top and a paper element air cleaner, as well as our pulleys here with the generator down under the engine at the bottom, and our fan gluing onto the end. So let's take a look at how these plastic components look on our engine. Here we have all the parts that relate to our Ford FE engine. And I did cut down parts trees and that sort of thing just to make this a little simpler. So what we have here, we'll start this way and go across. We have our paper element air cleaner. We have our four barrel carburetor, our intake manifold, which is upside down, actually here. There you can see the nice detail on that manifold there. All right. And then we have our exhaust manifolds here. Now these long square ones, or rectangular shaped ones, are actually the stock Ford FE exhaust manifolds. These chrome ones down below are for the custom, or the racing version, I guess, because this is a custom uh, motor, right? So for these exhaust manifolds, I would recommend them being used in something like if you're going to put this engine in the 40 Ford or the 36 or something like that where you have the fender aprons and the fenders and it's really a tight engine compartment and that sort of thing use these if you're going to build the 32 Ford uh, Vicky or the Phaeton Phaeton pardon me with the exposed rails and where you can actually cut the hood sides out and not use the fenders these are the ones you want to use now these glue together with this is the outer, this is the inner, there's a locking piece as well. Actually, I think this is the inner, that's the outer, whatever. And then they plug into these collectors at the back, which is really nice. Uh, well, getting into exhaust, there's the exhaust pipes for the custom. 
These ones you can't really glue on the side of the engine. You have to, they've got little pins in here and those will go underneath on your fenders and your frame. And uh, you will have to glue your engine in the engine bay and then if you want to use these you glue them in after and try to line them up onto the ends of the stock exhausts. This little Y piece here is our radiator hose with the splitter in it from uh, the single in the engine to split into the two for the radiator. Okay, then we've got our engine block here with our right and left hand sides. We've got our fan here and our fan belt and pulleys. And then the cylinder heads with the valley cover, which we'll glue on there. Our oil pan. And then here, I just need to space this out a little bit. There's our chrome distributor and our chrome valve covers. So once you glue all these up, you get that nice Ford FE engine. So let's start by gluing our uh, engine block together. And I'll show you some of the little bits and problems with it. Here we have our two engine halves. And again, these ones, if you just clip them off the parts tree, you'll see that there is a locator peg pin here. And then on the other one, there's location holes. Now again, like my old uncle used to say, get rid of the pins, and here's why. Just a minute here. There. Now, if you notice this engine block, if we can catch it in the light properly, you can see that it's actually shifted quite a bit. It shifted sort of one side forward to the other. See there? And it also shifted top to bottom. So, like, let's see if you can catch this line here. You can see that this part is down this way and this part of the engine is up that way. And it's apparent up here too because this is also out of adjustment. So, what we need to do, of course, is grab our sandpaper block. We can put the whole side to the side. Haha. <laughs> And then we want to sand these pins off. This seems to be a standard procedure with these motors, but again, keep in mind, these came out in 1960, 61, 62, somewhere back there. And they've been, the molds have had plastic through them for decades. How many, what do we got from 60 to 2020? <laughs> 50 years, 50 years of all this stuff. So now that our pins are off, we can put glue down our engine here, and then you want to move it back and forth and up and down and that sort of thing until it becomes in perfect alignment. So once that happens, we are ready for scraping down the seam lines and test fitting some of our other parts. So I'm going to glue this together off camera, and then we can have a quick look at how it all goes. Oh, but before I glue it, should also take a sandpaper and just perfect out the side with the holes in it. Do a little cross sanding here. Just so that these two will fit together nicely. In case there's any like little twists or something bizarre we can't see in the sides where the engine glues together. So there it is. Ready to go. Now we have our engine block glued together and it's ready for sanding on that seam line. I, of course, have adjusted it to the right look for it with the uh, proper, I don't know, alignment. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> hey, so next up is, of course, the cylinders with our valley cover up here, and our distributor is going to go in the front. That's what that hole is for. So it would just fit on there. But as you can see, there is a gap issue, and this thing really wants to slide back and forth a lot. You can see the gap more at the back. So there are a few ways to correct this, but I think first off, we're going to need our tools. What hobby tools? Danny, those are the same tools we've been using for 40 years. Oh, those hobby tools! Right, and here's what I suggest using. Number one, we've got to take our valley cover here and take a good look at it from upside down. And you can see four mold marks in here. 
uh, if the camera would focus. <laughs> and there is quite a bit of flash just on these edges. So our first tool, of course, is our hobby knife. And there's one with a number 11 blade. And we can use that just to clean and scrape any of the overhanging seam lines and that sort of thing off our cylinder head like that. Now, the second tool is, of course, our number 16 hobby blade. And like I was saying in one of the other videos, you can get in nice and flat, just like that, and go on those uh, mold marks. Or you could use the hobby file and do the same thing by running it down this way, if you can get it all the way in there. And then the other thing, I've got evergreen styrene and this is an assortment of flat sheets in 010 of an inch, zero or point zero two zero of an inch, and point zero four zero of an inch. And what I want to do with this is I'm going to use another tool that I have here. This, of course, is a compass from my old geometry set. And what I would do is I take our engine block and I'd wind our compass downward until it aligns. I guess the best way to do it is with the point running against the engine and the pencil end running against the top. And once I get that measurement, I can take out a sheet of styrene and I can run along the edge and it will give me the size of a strip that I need. And then I can take that number 11 hobby blade Turn it upside down so the point is up against our ruler, which we'll also need. Figure out where that line is, and then you score it a few times. And then you can just take the sheet and fold it and snap it. Now I would suggest using the 010, or 0 .010, pardon me, because for the uh, top... Where did it go? Here it is. <laughs> for this here... Remember, you're going to have, if you go on one side and it's too thick, you're going to have your valves over there, or your cylinder head over there. You want to get it in between the middle somewhere, and the thinnest sheet I have is that 0 .010. So I'm going to have to put it on both sides and hope that it's not too thick. Well, if it is too thick, you can always take the sandpaper and do our cross hatching here. Put this on again, test it, cross sand here, test it cross sand there until it finally fits perfectly on there with no gap because the gap is going to be filled up with a shim and our shim new word for you is the 0 0.010 of an inch sheet styrene so I will get all that together, glue this thing up, and show you what it looks like. And I'm also going to clean all the seam lines. Here's our FE engine after I glued down the 0 0.010 sheet styrene, cut to length, cut to width, and glued on the top of our cylinders. So now, how does it look when we put our cylinder head on here? Cylinder heads. As you can see, there is no more gap. I did get that uh, thickness correct. <laughs> it does look like little gaskets, so I don't know. Um, but there is no gap. There is no sliding around on the top of this thing. It's pretty secure. Maybe a little back and forward there. So I'm going to have to figure out sort of where this should be positioned. Maybe it doesn't really matter. And uh, then I can put glue on the inside here and squish it in place. And we can move on to our next components. One thing I did notice about this, it's the only engine that doesn't have a hole back here for our differential peg to stick in, because it probably doesn't go that way on the 32 Ford. So we'll have to figure out an interesting way to hold this if you're going to spray paint this engine. Maybe you could clip it on this little post here and then paint that after. I don't know. Oh, you could drill a hole up here under the oil pan. Um, I did remove the little uh, pin that was sticking here, but we know that the the big part of the pan is at the back. But yeah, if you drill a hole in here, then you can put a stick up inside, and then the oil pan, when you glue it on the top, will cover the hole. So maybe I'll try doing that, just for uh, something to hold this engine on when we paint it. One thing that I've noticed here with our 
cylinder heads and our valley pan here is again that well like we had to put the shims in right so when we put our intake manifold on here i also noticed that there is a lot of play going on in here and if you push this over to one side you'll notice a big gap along here so what i'm thinking of doing for our second engine is actually taking our valley cover and we will push the cylinder head far over on one side and we're going to take our snap saw here and what we'll do actually we will cut along that line sort of in between this peg and the hole we we'll saw this thing in half and then I will you know put one side onto the cylinder heads and figure out how much of this area in here needs to be removed and I'll try to get these two sides tight together and then that should give us the proper um, clearance up here on our intake manifold and since I figured something out the Edsel engine was painted yellow and then the bigger motor is painted green the Ford one is painted Ford blue and the Ford has the aluminum intake manifold. So I'm going to glue one manifold onto one engine and paint it all yellow. And I'm going to take the manifold off and paint that one aluminum and paint the motor blue for the Ford. So we'll have two different engines, the Edsel and the Ford. So here I've cut the uh, valley cover apart. And what I did was, well, like I showed, I cut it along that line there and I used my sandpaper block just to true up this edge. And what I noticed is that now, if we push our cylinder head up against this um, little peg that's sticking up, you can see that the seam line for the engine block is ran perfectly with where I sawed it off. And then on the other side here, it did overhang, so I had to take that sandpaper block and then sand it again so that it this side of the valley cover which was longer would actually line up with that seam line again on this side of the engine and now if i put the two halves together you can see there's no gap here now between the uh, cylinder heads and the actual cylinder area and since this is going to become the yellow engine for our uh, edsel i can just put our glue right on here Let's make a little box shape. Just go like this. Okay. Hope that motor doesn't turn over onto my uh, the gray sheet here. Now that little thing goes up to the front there. This little thing. <laughs> and then we also have on this side the hole going up to the front because the hole is our distributor cap location. Now, I didn't quite sand this absolutely perfect to match each other. Up at the front you can see a little bit of a cut groove gap. But, I mean, this does fit together a lot nicer. I just have to, just like with the engine block, slide this around a little. What I'm doing is I'm aligning it back here so that that looks straight across. Same for up there. Then, our intake manifold. Now. Uh, not sure which way goes to the front. I'll look it up in the instructions in a minute. But it now actually seats properly, just like it should, touching there on the cylinder heads and right up tight, unlike the other engine where this is a big slippy mess up here. Too bad I can't take the uh, this off and saw it. But even with that cut line, it you know, you really can't see much now with the intake manifold up in the way. So, you know, it should be okay. Might even be able to fill this if you really wanted to with a little bit of glue. I think I'm going to just leave it. Paint over the top. Hope no one notices. But anyway, that is the two ways to correct the gap. One is to put in white spacers. Here. <laughs> And the other is to cut that uh, valley cover down by that sixteenth of an inch that it needs to join together properly. So there's our two ways. And 
yeah, I will glue the one in here. Oh, it fits so nice. <laughs> and um, then I will paint this one separately. And I think pretty much at this stage, we're ready to move our engines on to the painting phase. Here we have our two FE engines after a bit of paint on some of the parts. Now, I haven't painted the fan belt pulleys and the stock exhaust manifolds just yet, but I just want to show you progress as we're going along here. So I'm going to pay a little homage to the actual Edsel engine, the uh, E400, because E400 had a white air cleaner and it had white valve covers, but since these engines are sort of hot rotted up, you get these chrome um, finned valve covers instead. So I left the or I painted the air cleaner top with gloss white paint just to sort of reflect back that that's the Edsel motor. And then over here, of course, we have our Ford engine, and this is painted the Ford blue. And the air cleaners were also Ford blue, so I matched that up. Did some gold carburetors on here for a change, and then there's that aluminum intake manifold. And now, Danny, before we glue any of these parts on, including the chrome, what do we have to do, like, here and there and everywhere else that this is going to go and contact? Remember to scrape the paint and chrome off those contact surfaces of the plastic before you glue it together. That's right, Danny. We've got to scrape off the chrome and the paint just on the contact surfaces, not like on the tops or anything else of our detailed parts. But just so that when we put the pieces on, they will glue in place and stay there forever. Forever! So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take and scrape off where the contact surfaces go. I'm going to paint our starter with the black paint. What's interesting about these motors is I don't really know if they actually have oil filters molded on them because there's nothing hanging off the side of the engine pan here or uh, with the oil pan, I mean, or anything else. All I can see on here is your starter motor. So. I guess that's all we need to paint there. Okay, so I'm going to uh, scrape the chrome and clean up our chrome pieces and all the rest, glue all this together, and then we'll have a look at both our engines. Here we have our chrome headers for the racing version of this model, and you'll see that there are three parts, an inner and outer and this little end piece. And what I've noticed on here is there is quite a bit of flash on the actual headers here. So what I do is I take my hobby knife, instead of scraping this way, which is going to take off a lot of chrome, I turn my knife so that it goes along the top of the seam line, and then I just bring it out. Oops, <laughs> there goes some of that flash. Bring it along here. So the only thing that's really getting removed is just a little bit of that seam line off the top. And there you can start to see that this edge is getting a lot um, smoother. And of course you're going to do the same in here. Just little by little. And there, now we're getting more of a rounded pipe without obliterating all the chrome off the edges. And then what we'll do is you want to get the contact surfaces. So that's this angle here and the little knob. You scrape those, and then the uh, little cap is going to go all the way over top of these headers. So first off, the headers glue together like this. So that means that this area here has to be scraped out and scraped out on the inner chase. Uh, any mold marks that are sitting on here, again, use that same technique, go flat with the headers, just push in. Once, When those inners are uh, cleared up, we want to also clean the outer surface of the headers here, because those are going to glue into the side walls inside our little bucket here. And then you want to scrape the chrome out of the bucket and clip these little bits off here and there, and just smooth everything out, and then you would be ready to glue them together and push them in on the end. 
Now, I do have the other side, which is ready to go. And you can see where the uh, chrome is removed, which should be there along the edge here. This one is uh, dark gray. Let's try this one here. You can see it's uh, more white. I don't know why I have two different types of headers sitting in my collection, but there's the outers scraped off, the inner scraped off, the little ends here. And the chrome wants to shatter and break into little bits. So I clean this up and then I washed the parts in the sink just to get rid of all of the exploded bits. And then here on our little collector, there's a uh, tree mark here and here. So when you glue this together, you want to put glue on that inner surface. And then this becomes a unit. And then put glue on the outer surface. And then on this, you want to line up these two little reliefs, you know, where the it was sitting on the parts tree. And we want to turn it, okay, so that when it plugs in, you've got one here, and that'll be sitting up toward the frame of the car. Now we're going to paint these over with silver, of course, but it gets, like there's the other one there at the bottom, so it takes the view of your silver paint off of the outside here. See, like if you did this the other way around, you would have these poking basically outside. So you'd see silver paint there and silver paint there. But if you strategically turn this so that your silver paint's going to be up against the frame, it'll be hidden from view of your model and you'll have the factory chrome on this edge, which will make for a better appearance. But yeah, these push into the bottom and there will be your your racing header right there looking nice and powerful and menacing and then of course this will glue onto the side of the engine block whoops everything fell apart on me it'll glue in into those holes down there and sit out much well like that i guess if this didn't fall apart we'd see something nice but anyway, that's the concept. So again, you want to scrape the paint out of these holes because that's where these are going to glue into. Just so you know, if you're using those headers, this is how you want to scrape the paint out of them. Just a little loop inside and then a little on the edge. You don't want to go all the way across because then you're going to have to repaint that with your blue paint. See, you just want it to line up like that. So that's how it'll look when you scrape away your paint, just a little bit in there. Here we have our two FE engines, the Ford one being here, that is our 352 cubic inch police interceptor version, and our Edsel E400, which of course is the 360 cubic inch version. And now, <laughs> one thing that really stands out on the police interceptor is the gigantic exhaust headers. They glued on really nicely, basically fit in the holes perfectly, and then because of that angle in there, as you can see, they stick straight out. And that really worked well when we glued this onto our engine block. But as you can see, it's a gigantic spider on here. Looks like a huge tarantula. This setup would be good on like a 32 Ford with no fenders and open frame rails, no hood so that these can go over top of the frame. And whereas our Edsel here, it has the stock style headers on there, exhaust manifolds, I should say. And this would be good under something like a 1940 Ford hood, where you've got the fenders coming in and you can't cut through them like with this. So you have a nice option of either way of building this motor in the kit, Really, you're building the motor the same way twice, although with something simple as just painting the manifold here the same color as the engine block, and here painting the aluminum on it, you do get quite a different look to your engines. So what I'll do here is I'll take pictures of each engine individually, and then we can wrap up our engine build.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our Ford FE engine, and you learned quite a bit about its history and its real coolness that it survived for such a long time in different variations and forms and everything else. The guys at Ford Edsel Divisions really knew how to build a really cool motor. So what kind of model car would you put it in? Let us know down below in the comments. Oh, I think I feel something coming up my leg here. Oh, oh, it's Danny the dog. Hi, Danny. So did you enjoy that engine build? Did you learn something from it? Yeah. So Danny, what kind of engine do you think we should do next time? Oh, you want me to come there? Okay. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. Actually, I really like that motor a lot and I think you will too. So tune in next time and we'll take a look at Danny's mystery motor. Woo! Or just look at my previews. It's probably there waiting for you next week anyway. <laughs> uh, Danny, you know, you talk a lot at the beginning of each video here, but then at the end, it's like all the words just fell out of your mouth and you have no more left. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, well, I got an idea. Um, while we're waiting for the next video with you in it, why don't you eat some alphabet soup? And then you can put more letters and words in your little mouth here. Is that a good idea? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so are you going to go now, Danny? Okay, say bye. Okay, bye-bye, Danny. Bye. All right, well, hopefully Danny will uh, come up with some new words for next time. And like I say, they just kind of run out at the end of the video. Anyway, from me and Danny the dog, we hope you have a good model building adventure. And we'll see you next week. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address www.monster-hobbies.ca Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.